Hello, my name is Chris Horton, and this is George. And you're watching Kidlit TV. You're watching the Publisher Spotlight Showcase on Kidlit TV. And now here are your hosts, Rocco Steno and Ellen Myrick. Hi, I'm Rocco Stano and welcome to Kid Lit TV. Today, very special day because we have Ellen Myrick with me and, uh, and you're with Publishers Spotlight. That's right. Yeah. And what are we going to be doing today? We're going to see some exciting spring 2017 books from lots of publishers from all over the world. All over the world. And all of these books can be yours for free because we're having a little uh, contest. So anyone that puts a comment into the comment section will be eligible. We already have uh, two people we'd like to thank. I think is Janie Ransom and Henry Hurst uh, for their comments. And it hasn't even started. And people Amazing. are commenting. Yes. And for your um, pleasure for the show, we also have a list of all the books that we're, we will be uh, speaking about mm -hmm. in the order we're speaking. Uh, so quickly print that out and you can check off all the books that you want to add to your library, either home library or your work library. <laughs> yes. So, so let's get started all because right. we have so many a uh, book. So who, who's the first publisher? Today we're going to start with Gecko Press from New Zealand. And Gecko was the winner of the very first ever Publisher of the Year Prize for award given by Bologna International Book Fair uh -huh. in Italy. This was in 2013. They have a different Publisher of the Year for each part of the world. And Gecko was the winner for Oceana because uh -huh. they're from New Zealand. And how cool is that? Well, you know, Bologna is on my bucket list. It's one of the places I want to yeah. go. So have you been? I have once. And once. It was amazing. Yes, yeah, so there are yeah. people from all over the world and books from all over the world. But this is like our own little our Bologna yeah. uh, book festival right here because we have books from, from uh, Brazil and, and New Zealand and, and Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, yes. Yes, yeah, so all over the Maine. We got, we've got it all right here. Yeah, so, so but uh, Gecko. Uh, Let's Gecko. start off with Gecko. So we're going to start off with a favorite for everybody, Detective Gordon. So Detective Gordon, his second book, which was um, a complicated case, just was an SLJ Best Book of the Year. So the ah. last time you tuned in for a, a live for a stream for a live stream from Kidlit TV, you would have saw you would have seen a complicated case. And this time, it's a case in any case. And this one, Detective Gordon has retired, but don't worry because Buffy, who is a mouse needs a little bit of help from her friend who just retired when there's some mysterious sounds coming from the woods. Now, is it possible to have too many really wonderful illustrated chapter books? I don't think so. And this is something that Gecko is really good at. So I have to show a few of the fantastic illustrations that come in here because, you know, just because kids can read on their own doesn't mean that they're not going to want to see what happens with a mysterious scrabbler. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. So lots of illustrations. Easy chapters, lots of things to learn, and lots of friends to make. Terrific. From all inside the case, the, the forest of Detective Gordon and his new friend Buffy. And so it's sympathetic to a, a retiree. Oh, yes. 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 So this is very good for, you know, when you have yeah. grandparents week or whatever. Yeah, yes, this yes. on your nightstand, Rocco? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to see. Yes, yeah. you never know. <laughs> okay. Yes, well, I have... Uh, another book from them, and it's called Gus's Garage by Leo Tim uh, uh, Timmers. 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 Leo Timmers. Timmers. Yes, uh, Ellen's going to be helping me with all these uh, <laughs> uh, names today. So uh, Gus, we all know someone like Gus. You know, sometimes uh, neighbors tend to collect things in their yards, and sometimes the neighbors will complain because they'll be miscellaneous things like a refrigerator and, and a garbage can and an old telephone and Gus but Gus is very helpful person and actually this is kind of a, a stem type of book because uh, we have our, our giraffe coming here uh, and uh, and the giraffe uh, uh, Gina the giraffe Yes. Of course. Uh, yes. Alliterations. Comes. Yes. Important. Right. Yeah. And so Gus said, "Hey, how are you, um, Gina?" And she goes, "Chilly, Gus." And so, if I were using this with a, a a group of kids, I would say, "So, what do you think Gus is going to use in his 
actual uh, yard full of items to help uh, Gina. Well, then we turn the page and he says, let's see, I have some bits and bobs. And he creates a little uh, heater for Gina using his uh, stove and various uh, cans here. So that is uh, Gus and so, well, it could be STEM or it could be- Steam. Steam, it yes, mo steam. most definitely yeah. a STEAM a book. Well, yes. all that hot air has to go someplace. You right? got it. Yep, there we go. So our next title from Gecko is Bruno. And this is some of the more interesting days in my life so far. And this is an illustrated chapter book, but not in the conventional sense. This has got a few words, but it is done in chapters, and each chapter represents a different day in the life of Bruno, this very attractive, handsome cat, very dapper. This is by, I should say, I should say that it's by Katharina Valsk and Nicholas Ubesh. And if I pronounce that wrong, you can tell me in the comment section. <laughs> so this is a peculiar day because fish do not normally swim through the air. And lots of peculiar things happen. In fact, his friend, the pony, only can walk backwards. And it isn't until they all join the friend, the fish, in the water does everything get put back to the way it should normally be. But this is Bruno, and there are several days in each chapter. One day in each chapter, several chapters. So I hope you'll check this one out. It's really fun, and the illustrations are just delightful. Yes, and uh, your since yours sincerely, Giraffe. Uh, by Megumi Iwasa and illustrated by Jun Taka. Oh, I have to see it. Jun Takabakate. Bakate. I think that's Taka right. Bakate. I, I try or, to get, yeah. Also known as Smith. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> it is old school because a giraffe is a letter writer and actually starts to send letters out. And you know what? One of the letters goes, Dear you. Whoever you are who lives on the other side of the horizon, I am giraffe. I live in Africa. I am famous for my long neck. Please tell me all about yourself. Yours sincerely, giraffe. Which begins a friendship between a giraffe and penguin. So it's almost like a pen pal type yeah. of thing. You know, you remember pen pals. Yeah, I remember pen pals. That's what they had before yeah. email or texting. That's for right. For those of you of, you know, earlier generations right. or younger generations. Yes. So, you know, so, a great a, a chapter book. Yeah, and, and wonderful line drawings throughout mm -hmm. this book, too. So, oh, yes. We have yeah. our uh, a seal yes. uh, delivering a uh, letter to Penguin here. Because that's what seals do. Get that's the seal right. of approval. The seal oh, of approval, baboom. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't heard nothing yet, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Moving yeah. right along yes. <laughs> to my pictures after the storm. So this is a most unusual board book, Rocco, because this presents things as they are before and after. And everyone knows before and after board books are abound. But how often do they have this kind of sly sense of humor you'll see? This is the before and this is the after. The storm, of course. The pail is here spilled. The parasol has blown off the actual page. Um, my favorite is, well, the boy on the ship, the boy in the, uh, mm. anyway, we'll move on from that. And here is <laughs> swimming, askew, swimming master and towel disaster, so he's blind. But you can see there is a very fun sense of humor here. And I said it's a board book, it's actually just really, really thick pages, but rounded corners. So. Lots of fun things. My pictures here and then pictures after lunch. The apple has been eaten. It's a great way to get kids to understand the sequence of events. And also, don't you like a board book that gives something for the, ki for the parents to enjoy too? So you'll find that here. Here is the fluffy towel and the winter wings and there's red and yellow soggy heap. That sometimes is what happens after a storm. That's right. So that is my pictures after the storm by Eric Veja. And, and that probably is pronounced wrong, so okay, well, as then I said, I'll, I'll continue with okay. mispronunciations <laughs> with uh, The Lost Kitten by Lee and uh, Kam Kam Kamoka Kamaka Sakai. 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 Yeah. Kamaka Sakai. Uh -huh. The Lost ki a Kitten will have you running to your local shelter to adopt a, a kitten. And, and it is a story about a little gr girl who, in the book, actually uh, loses her mother. And uh, but then she's reunited, and then she uh, actually finds a kitten that she adopts uh, later on in the book. Yes. Yeah, so it, it, the illustrations are Gorgeous. beautiful. Yes. 
This is the same illustrator that did Hannah's Night and then uh, Waiting, which is also by Kamako Sakai, mm -hmm. which was a New York Times 10 Best Illustrated book. So, uh -huh. you know, she's she's got a following. Was it, that this year? That was a few years yeah, ago. A few years, years ago, ago, yes. Yep. Yeah, well, a beautiful illustrations, as we said. It should probably come with a warning that you'll want to go to your local animal shelter as soon as you finish reading. Right, yeah, yeah. so all the local animal shelters probably should stock up on this book. So every time someone comes and adopts a kitten, you can give them this book. I love that idea. Yes, yeah, and now we're on to another publisher. We are, we are Which on one? to... And um, where, <laughs> uh, yeah, the name of the publisher and where is it located? We're on to Tiger Tales. Tiger Tales. Which is um, the US part of Little Tiger Press, which originated in the UK. But kind of like some other publishers, the U.S. publishing program is independent, although they use some things from the U.K. So, sort of so, like Candlewick, because yeah, in Candlewick, and, and it's Walker. a walker, right, yeah, in yeah. England, yes. So here it's Tiger Tales, and they, yeah, and let's see what they have from Oh, well, I love this one. This is uh, Bear's House of Books by uh, Poppy Bishop and Alison Ed Edson. And it's one of those books that takes you into um, meet a group of cute, adorable animals. You know, we have a, a fox and a, and a rabbit, a hedgehog, because it's British. Right? Yeah, it is, yes. you have to have hedgehogs. Yes, yes. Yeah. and the poor things, they mm -hmm. only have one book, only one book, and they love books. Oh. So they go off to try and find books, you know, where do books come from? And they actually discover a house filled with books and they are in their glory and they are there checking out all the books but in a little ode uh, well we have the fox here eating a jelly sandwich and actually dripping some uh, jelly onto the books and uh, and who shows up don't do this at home kids yes Ah, oh, just a little ode to the uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Ah, uh, who's been reading my books? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it does have a happy ending because That's the really bear starts his own uh, bear library. Yay! And, and like all libraries. We need some rules, like uh, no sticky pores, no jelly sandwiches. So this is a great, uh, beautiful, mm -hmm. cute, it is a cute book. It is a cute yeah, book. Yeah, it is a yeah. cute book, yes. Very cute book. And I have another book from Tiger Tales. This is We Are Family, because there are so many different kinds of families in the world, and they all have common experiences. So this book kind of tells that story. And I think the illustrations are lovely, and there's so much to see on every single page on this book. So we'll start with that, and then we'll go in. Wherever you are, whatever the weather, families always stick together. So that's something we all enjoy. And you can see the many different kinds of families reflected in the book. Are they, are they taking a selfie? They're taking They're, a selfie they are taking right a there. Selfie. I um, love that. Yeah, so, so it's current. <laughs> it is very current. It is very current. And one thing I really love is that they acknowledge that sometimes families have troubles. Ah. So sometimes they go on vacation. If something bad happens, I can't get to it. If, so, if something bad happens, it happens to us all. A fire, a flood, an illness, disappointment, or a fall. So thank you very much for adjusting that, Rocco. And this is just an indicator of some of the wonderful things you'll see in this book. So good things, bad things, but in the end, we're all in it together. And so this book is coming out when? This is a, this is spring. Spring, a spring. sometime in the spring, yes. Yeah, it's a spring book. But I we have I, some hard copies here, so that's why I'm all confused. Yeah, this was an advanced copy. So an yeah. advanced copy. If sometimes the books look a little floppy, it's because it's an advanced copy. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that it's not eventually going to be a hardcover. Mm -hmm. So that is what this is. Now, I think the next book, and I think I've got the next I book. I think you have the next book. I have book. the next book, is definitely a hardcover. Mm -hmm. And this is from a new imprint. From, from Tiger Tales called 360 Degrees. They started this last season, and actually one of the books was featured in the New York Times Book Review Gift Guide last oh. week, Hello World. And these are two that are coming out in the spring, Animal Journeys and Things That Grow. I so, love the uh, trim size. Yeah, it's very kid-friendly. Yeah, it is. So, But they have, they're just chock full of information. So lots of facts. Animal Journeys is about migration patterns, and you'd be surprised that some of the things migrated. Uh, you probably knew this, Rocco, but did you know that crabs migrate? I, uh, no. I did not know that. But you find that out in this book. 
And then in this one, Things That Grow, it covers all kinds of flora and fauna. And the illustrations, again, are just beautiful because they know how to do that at 360 degrees. So here's Persevering Penguins. It's too hot to handle. I should give you more time to look at these. Yes. We have loads On of On track, time. tracks. You can see different kinds of animal tracks because animals move. And then animal antics. So these are just a few of the different pictures and the gorgeous animal journeys. And you know what? I think I need to show at least a couple from things that grow. I think so, too. Because we don't want to you know, skip over flora and fauna because that's important. So beautiful flowers. Mm -hmm. Just so pretty. So pretty. And time to grow your own. Oh, my goodness. There's how to do it yourself. Don't we love that? Teachers like that too. They do. I can see how this would work really well in that situation. So that is Things That Grow and Animal Journeys from 360 coming in the spring. And one more 360 book. I, a beautiful 360 yeah. book that I just love to feel the cover because it has a die cut uh, a cover called The Earth Book. Uh, the World of Exploration and Wonder by Jonathan Lydon and illustrated by uh, Thomas Hagbrook. And this is a perfect book for any of people who are into the natural sciences here because there are, if you want to know about the center of the earth, we have a whole um, spread here. Getting to the core of the matter, aren't you? Yes, yeah, I'm most yeah. definitely getting to the core. Yeah. Yes, and, and then uh, there is earthquakes and how weather works. Beautiful. And what other one? Ah. Everything Earth is in this book. Everything, even cities, super cities. So I saw New York, of course, that's a super city. Yes. Yes, but it, we have Cairo and Istanbul and Paris and London and Sydney. So uh, what's your super city? Put it in the comments uh -huh. and you may be eligible to win this book and all the others. Oh my goodness. Yes. And it can be super to you. It doesn't necessarily have to be super city on the size of New York. Yeah, Poughkeepsie is my super city. Oh well, and it's just so much fun <laughs> to say too, right? Yes, it certainly is. Okay. So now we are ready. Actually, I think you're next. Am I? I think you're next with. Oh, wait, hold on. I am, uh, wait, wait, wait. I am all, that's, ah, yes. Those two twins, yeah, yes. Got the twins. And actually it's uh, Gannon and Wyatt. Gannon and, oh, there's lots of stickies over here for Gannon and Wyatt. <laughs> so uh, Gannon and Wyatt are mm -hmm. twins. They've been around because they've been around. They've been traveling around, let me tell mm -hmm. you. And they are twins. One is a filmmaker and the other one is a scientist. That's right. And they've been to places like Egypt and... Uh, and um, the Great Bear Rainforest. The Great Bear Rainforest and Botswana. So if you need a book about Botswana, get Gannon and Wyatt and this time they're in Hawaii and the and they are also on the go after Hawaii where are they going they're going to Cuba and and Iceland and so, Iceland I know and the beautiful thing about this is they journal so there are lots of points of entry and there's a lot of photography so for somebody it may not want to have just a lot of gray stuff when they're looking at a book it needs a little something to ease yeah. the eye yeah, for, yeah, Gannon right and here. Wyatt may yes. be just the ticket Yes, and we're asking your help because mm -hmm. after Gannon and Wyatt finish in Cuba, we need somewhere for Gannon and Wyatt to go. So we would like you to suggest a location for Gannon and Wyatt. And, you know, where the Great Barrier Reef was my uh, Yeah, I guess. like that idea. Yes, and, but I'm sure there are many, many places that uh, Gannon and Wyatt will be going. They are getting around for sure. And speaking of people who get around, nobody gets around more than this guy. So I'm moving <laughs> on to Diamond Book Distributors, and this is published by Penguin UK, which is distributed here in the United States by Diamond. Who knew that? Yeah, who knew? So yeah, Doctor Who went to America. Who knew? And of course, aliens are involved, and time travel is involved, and all the fun things. And Doctor Who is seen on a lot of TV stations now, and so kids are really into it. And these are middle grade novels about Doctor Who. Um, this one, he goes back in time, he's involved in all sorts of American, you know, key moments in American history. Well, world history, too. And world history, too, but that's in the other one that I'm oh. going to look at next. But in this one, he's in the, the D-Day landings. Um, ghosts take over the New York subways. Oh, has that already happened? 
No, I don't. I don't. No, think so. no. They, uh, yes. Maybe I don't, they, know. I don't know. So all that is right here with Doctor Who and the American Adventures. But we also have. Oops. I just dropped a book. Sorry. Sorry, that happens. Book droppage just happened. Well, we also have the history of humankind. Which Doctor is amazing Who with Doctor Who. Right. I'm trying to balance these. Let's see. This is live. This is live. 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 Yes. yes, and yes, I am unbalanced. But this is a history of humankind, the doctor's official guide. So all those things that happen in history didn't happen quite the way you thought. So this is going to take you back in time and find out. And for instance, did you know that Queen Elizabeth the First was married? No. She was. Really? And who was she married to? Well, it turns out she was married to Doctor Who. Of course. So you find out information about the historical figures, and then you get his take on it because, you know, he was there. Have TARDIS, will travel. Yes. And now, uh, uh, there he is. Yeah, right there. He there. Is. And what with a dapper looking fellow in his uh, Elizabethan and with collar. With his ruff and yes, all that. Yeah. yeah. Now, does he end up marrying anybody else in the book? Well, I don't want to give it away. Oh, okay, yes. And, and I don't know if uh, he can be a polygamist, but you know well, what? Well, you never know. I you mean, I, Doctor Who. Oh, well. Yeah, Doctor anyway. Who. Yes. So it's the Doctor's Official Guide. Great fun for anybody who loves Doctor Who or just really a great way to encounter history with a slightly twisted you know, perspective. So, <laughs> so I think we have something else from another yeah, well, Diamond publisher. Yes, no, and uh, this is, uh, well, these are two books uh, from a series. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is A Love Tiger, and this one is Love Lion, and they're by Frederick Roman and Federico Bortolucci. Very well done. Uh, yes, and the, it's wordless. It brings us into the world of nature the sometimes a gory uh, world of nature. I mean, there are- uh, Antelopes will be eaten. Antelopes will be eaten. Yeah. Yes, well this is a good thing, you know, because I'm going on a safari uh, next month. Oh. So I need, I need to look at these uh, books so I can be prepared for what I may or may not see, yes. Yeah, and it's it's uh, wordless, so this is great for teachers or yes. anybody who likes to tell their own stories. Right. So you can use it as a writing prompt or, or a story starter. Terrific, yeah. yes, and uh, so this is brand new. This is the newest That's of the newest one, and there's one coming out. Um, so this is actually coming out this season. Love the Lion is, is fall, but in, some, in spring, we have the dinosaur. Dinosaur. Love the dinosaur. And if you think it was messy seeing an antelope being eaten, mm -hmm. wait till you see what the T-Rex does. It's oh very fun. Oh my, oh my. Yeah. have you seen some of the... Uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe okay. I've seen a few maybe. spreads. Yes, yeah. okay. And this is from Magnetic Press, which Magnetic is Press. now distributed by Lion Forge. So, Magnetic Press, because we're going around the world, where are they? Well, Magnetic Press is here, but these, I think, are a French-Italian collaboration. Uh -huh. So, yeah. They Terrific. Get, they, go, they go around the world, indeed. And... Our next publisher, some people may uh, know, is uh -huh. uh, Manga Classics. That's right, yeah. from uh, Udon. From Udon, yes. And they are known for taking classics, and in this case, Charlotte Bronte's um, Jane Eyre. And mm -hmm. it is truly manga, because we start from the back. That's how you can tell. Right, yes. And, and they are, um, well, it is a graphic novel of the classic story and we have let me find our but don't worry she still ends up with mr rochester yeah, oh I'm did trying, i spoil it no i want to just oh. find a good photo uh, not photo a good drawing of rochester oh yes. right here Very there, brooding. There, yes 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 we, handsome so we, and brooding yes. you have to have that rochester yes and and the one thing is jane Eyre does have that manga those manga Eyes. Manga eyes. eyes. Yes. And you know, it also is Charlotte Bronte's the 200th anniversary of her birth oh. this year. Uh, what better way to celebrate her birthday by reading a manga version of Because if she Jane were alive Eyre. today, maybe she would have been writing manga. Who knows? Right. But other titles uh, in the uh, other classic well, titles. The first ones were Les Miserables uh -huh. and Pride and Prejudice. And then Emma and Sense and Sensibility and Great Expectations. And I have to confess to a soft spot in my heart for The Scarlet Letter because you saw that one was black and white, but The Scarlet Letter has red in it because every time you see the letter A, it's red, which just makes me happy. And it jumps right off yeah, the page. Yeah, it just jumps right off the And it, it helps you understand what the curse was of her having to wear that A all her life. Right. Yeah. Well, The Scarlet Letter, I guess, is the only American classic. 
So far, so okay. far, but there are more coming. Um, uh, not so American so far. The next one's going to be The Count of Monte Cristo. And if ever there was an adventure story right from manga telling, I think it's The Count of Monte Cristo. And, uh, and The Jungle Book is coming as well. The Jungle Book, yeah. okay. So lots of good fun okay, stuff. Okay, but we need to get some American classics. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Suggestions? Yes, in the comments section, your American classic that should go manga. And yes. not just American. We're open to other classics from all over the world. All over the world. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think that'd be awesome to see what that what you guys come up with. Right. Okay. I'm just curious to see what they come up with yeah. uh, in our um, comments. Yes. Yes. Me too. And Me too. and now we're off to another publisher. So next we have Child's Play. Child's Play, and they're yes. here in the United States. Well, they are another UK publisher that has a U.S. publishing program. Yeah, so child's play. Child's play. So, so these are a couple of books that um, well, I'll let you talk about them. But child's play has been around for a long time, and most people think of them as the publisher yeah, of the "There Mac. Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly." Mm -hmm. And yes, they do that, and they do the Audrey and Don Woods, but they also do a lot of original picture books, and um, and great board books too. But we wanted to highlight a few of the hardcovers that right. are coming and, out. Right. And uh, okay, I'll say the title, and then you say the author. So this is Baking with Dad with um, Aurora. Caccio Puerte. Yeah, so we actually have some kick, uh, cooking segments here on Kid Lit uh, TV. So we like to uh, cook. And this is all about uh, cooking. This is baking with a dad. So it's a girl and her dad uh, who are going to bake. And uh, I love the beginning uh, here because there's some miscellaneous things. And I don't know why there's spiders and, 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 and uh, different creatures here, but then they, they start their cooking adventures in the kitchen. And uh, we have our little uh, cat here who is kind of on the sidelines commenting uh, through uh, facial expressions about the, uh, the actual cooking. Yes, and, but they, you know, they do things like shake and mix and whisk. Yes, oh. and uh, they have, and they uh, flour and then it results in a birthday cake to Yay. one of their friends. And, uh, and then there is, of course, if you're going to have a birthday cake, you have to have a birthday party. And here yeah. we have the whole neighborhood here, a very diverse uh, neighborhood. And, and our little cat is happy. Yay, yes, finally. Finally is yes. happy. And the other fun thing is at the end, the spread at the end is what one does after the party, which is clean up. Yes. S something very seldom shown in picture books about birthday parties. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Terrific. Yes. And uh, I think you're going to tell uh, me about uh, the next two. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, thank you. <laughs> Just keep me going. Yes. That's right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm moving too fast. But I love these two books. <laughs> I do, uh, too, because they actually uh, tell me, uh, so I'm going to take all these little s stickers off, mm -hmm. uh, about a uh, group of people that many young people uh, may not be aware of, and that's the Romani or Wanderers or Travelers. travelers. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, they're uh, mostly in Eastern Europe. Oh, they're all over. They're all over. All over. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, this is the first one, uh, which also sort of a STEM, uh, STEM uh, yeah. crazy creature book, too. Osari and the Bala Mangro. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, Osari. Os Osiri. I think Osiri. it's Osiri. Osiri. Like, but yeah, related we don't really to, know, so feel well, free to tell us yes, if we're wrong. Yeah, yeah. I think she's related to Siri. Yeah, so, you know, so uh, <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I will get my Siri out and ask, so Siri, what is Bala Mangro? And is Osiri related to you? Yes. Are you related? <laughs> yes. And anyway, um, she wa uh, wants to learn to play an instrument, or she wants an instrument, and she cannot, uh, they cannot afford one. And so she creates her own instrument. And here she is making it. Wow. Now and that shows a lot of ingenuity right yes, there. Yes, right there. So this is the what I call the stem part of yes. it. Right, yes, uh, where she's creating it. But unfortunately, her, the, peop her, uh, the group of people that she lives with don't, doesn't. They don't care for the, way, the noise right, it makes. Right, yeah. yes. But one person does. Yay. Yes, and that's uh, our friend. I guess it's our friend. The, uh, yeah. 
There he is. The uh, Balamingra Rari is what better thing than a very uh, mysterious looking creature. The Balamangro here. Uh, there he is, and there she is with her instrument, but he likes the music, so there is something for everyone in that one. Yes, it's very fun. And that's uh, by uh, Richard O'Neill and Catherine Quamby, Quarpy, and Hannah Tolson, and uh, that is a child play book. And the other one, uh, again, about the... Um, the Travelers. The Travelers, yeah. yeah. Uh, Yoki and Pono agree, mm -hmm. and this is a story about a... Uh, uh, about uh, a story about a white horse, mm -hmm. and is this the one where they? Uh, no, this is one. This one was where the gold comes in. That's where the gold comes yes, in. Yes, this is the gold comes in. Yeah, that I wonder saves, if you were just leaving that out. Ah, the gold comes in and saves the uh, village. They're rewarded for the for the kindness of her playing. The Balamengra likes it so much. He he happens to have a lot of gold. I think he lives in a barrow or something. Yeah, yeah. right. Yes, yeah. And, and and his life savings. Yes, yes. he <laughs> pays her. It doesn't mean anything to him. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and so this one has, um, it's a story about a, um, a magical horse? It is. It's a, it's a boy who tells stories of a magical horse right. to his, his uh, community who is always being shuffled around different, different areas. Nobody wants them to set up a camp where they are, and they're always told to go someplace else. I think there are a lot of people today who mm -hmm. have that experience of like, we don't want you here. Right. You have to go elsewhere. We don't care where. And um, and he tells the stories of the magical horse. So now this is uh, these are two books about the mm -hmm. same group of people. Are there more in the pipeline, as they say? I don't know if there are more, but those are the two here. So we'll see if people like these. Mm -hmm. um, the beautiful thing about that big white horse is it carries the entire community to a place they are safe and wanted. Mm -hmm. Which would would that we all had mystical white horses to take That's us to true. places we were safe and wanted. Yes. Yeah. And uh, was that and that's oh. You know, we've had this, um, all these books, but we haven't had a story yet. So I think it's time for a story, and, and yeah. you're going to tell us a story. I, okay, it's time for story time. That's Not How You Do It by Ariane Hoffman Manyar. That's not how you that's well, how I do it. That's, that's not more, how you do it. That's yeah, how I do it. A little more feeling. You want me to put more feeling? Yeah, a little more feeling. I don't know if you can handle more feeling there. <laughs> I think I can do it. Lucy knew how to do everything. I sure do. She knew how to eat with a spoon and fork. She knew how to play the xylophone. Lucy knew how to do gymnastics and how to build a tall tower. She knew how to, thank you Rocco, she knew how to paint an elephant just right and how to fold perfect stars. Please, can I help? There we go. Oh, thank you so much Rocco. In fact, if you didn't know how to do something, you came to Lucy for help. Everything was fine until the day Toshi arrives. Toshi. Hi there. That's Toshi. He did not know how to eat with a spoon and fork. And that's not how you do it. His music was strange. That's not how you do it. Toshi's gymnastics were all wrong. That's not how you do it. And his tower wasn't half as good as Lucy's. That's not how you do it. That, and he did not know how to draw an elephant like she did. That's not how you do it. And when he started to make a paper star, that was all wrong. Lucy couldn't keep quiet any longer. That's not how you do it. Hope that didn't blast your ears, sorry. Hey, Lucy, this is for you. This is lovely, Toshi. What is it? Will you show me how to make it? Oh, he says it's a paper, paper crane. crane. Can't leave out that. That's like the whole thing. It's a paper crane. Will you show me how to make it? Yes. And will you show me how to make a star like this? And here we get to see them making things together. They had so much fun that they made a whole flock of paper cranes and a night sky full of stars. And that's how you do it when you're reading. That's not how you do it. 
And there's a great follow-up activity. There's a great uh, art activity for, oh, if you're yeah. doing this uh, with a class of kids. They could make uh, paper cr cranes and stars. Yeah, it's, and it's also a way of saying, you know, maybe the kids who are moving in don't know the same things you know, but maybe you can learn from them and you guys can have a really good time together, which is not a bad thing. Well, that's just the first uh, half of our books, and I understand there are some sweet uh, treats for us. So why don't we take a, a little break mm -hmm. and we'll be back in a few minutes, about four minutes or so, mm -hmm. with a special guest that you're going to introduce. Yes. A special guest. <laughs> and you could comment, who is our special guest? And, uh, and the other thing is during the break, we have a treat for you because we have a world premiere. Yay! We don't have a red carpet, but it's the world premiere of a book trailer for... Madeline Finn and the Library Dog. And a library dog. You've heard of library cats, but there are very few library dogs. They don't sit dogs. still when you want to read to them like That's the dog right. does. Yes. Yeah. So we'll be back in a few minutes. We're going to check our comments and see if uh, there are... I'm sure there are. And we see will who's be contenders. back. Yeah. Yes, our contenders. <laughs> yes. Okay, we'll be back. Stay tuned for more when we return to the Publisher Spotlight Showcase on Kidlet TV.
Welcome back to the Publisher Spotlight Showcase on KidLit TV. And welcome back to KidLit TV's Publisher Spotlight Spring Preview. And we are very excited about our special guest who came all the way from Paris um, just for this, I'm sure. It was just for this, right? Ariane Lene Forest from Ozu Publishing. So yes, I came just for you. <laughs> um, no, I also came for the Kids Connect, Global Kids Connect event that's right. going on tomorrow. Yeah. But I'm really happy to be here. Today. Well, can you tell us a little bit about Ozu Publishing and your history? And Sure, so we're an independent uh, kids publisher, we're family owned, actually our name is the name of the founder, mm. Philippe Ozu, mm -hmm. uh, and his uh, son now who's also running, running the show. So mm -hmm. it started about 40 years ago, but the children's publishing arm only started 10 years ago, so we've mm. travelled a long way in a very short time really, because mm. we're now in the top 10 publishers in France. Oh wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. So how do children's books differ in Paris and France than they do here in the US, what's different? What kinds of things do people look for? Well, I mean, I think the, the publishing is not that dramatically mm. different. I think the landscape is slightly different because we have more independent publishers, mm. uh, although it's starting, you know, as everywhere else to get a little bit more concentrated. Yeah. Uh, but we've just had the Montreuil Book Fair, which so that's in the east of Paris, and it's a book fair that's specialized in children's publishing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, it's a, it's a, a great thing to do if you're ever in Paris at that time, like sort of late November, early December. Okay. Because you see a lot of publishers from Europe, because it's Francophone publishing, mm. come around and they showcase everything and you have illustrators and children's mm. uh, books writers. So it's really amazing. It's a, a real fest of creativity. Oh, wow. Um, and we all award prizes like you do in every book fair. And um, so most, I think most of the nuggets, because we call them nuggets, went mm. to um, picture books this year, this year and mm -hmm. also to um, comics. Because you know we oh, have wow. we have a, a real tradition of comics and graphic novels yeah. in, in France, as you do in the U.S. Yeah, but but French, I mean the French ones we saw some earlier today are just so gorgeous. So that makes sense. So are you saying nugget or are you saying nougat? I'm just wondering because you know I, I I like chocolate. Um, it's nuggets as in gold, right? As in gold. Oh, yes. Just checking because you know <laughs> you you you're known for your amazing. You know, things that you can eat, so I have to ask that. Okay, well, moving on from that, <laughs> I think you have a couple of books you're going to preview for us. Yes. So I'd love to hear about So some Spring those. 17 books. So yeah. the first one is Benjamin is an Unusual Duckling. Um, so it's a really, really fun title. So who ever heard of a barking duck? Um, Benjamin is a, is, a, is, is a little duckling and his family loves him but he's getting into trouble because instead of quacking he barks. So when you say hello to him he doesn't go quack quack, he goes woof woof. Um, after a while he's really sick and tired of all the little farmyard animals making fun of him Aww. so he decides to go on an adventure and see what's out, out there in the world. And he'll meet some other animals who also you know, have, are a little bit different like this snake. Uh, who has a lisp and is actually kind of funny and so he's decided to become a comedian. <laughs> um, he meets a mole as well who makes herself useful by building things. So like tunnels and homes for the other animals. Um, mm. And in the end, he actually falls asleep and all of a sudden he hears some noise. So that's him sort of like nighttime and it's very pretty, we like the illustrations. Um, and he hears a, a robber coming, so off he goes, he doesn't think for one second, and he runs to the farmyard to save all his friends, and he barks really loudly, so the robber gets scared and goes off. So Yay. it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a really nice, inspiring story, and it's about being different and mm -hmm. overcoming that, and about being inclusive. So yeah. we really like that story, and we hope- The, the differences readers. are your strengths. Exactly. Yes. Speaking of strength. <laughs> so the next one we have is The Strongest Man in the World, The Legend of Louis Cyr. So Louis Cyr is a strong man from Quebec and he was actually uh, given the title of Strongest Man in the World. Uh, he was born in the late 19th century in Quebec and he also lived in the Boston area. So this mm -hmm. is his story, um, really beautifully illustrated by Carolina Mel. So some of the illustrations. Mm -hmm. Um, which is nice because it's all really round and naive when it's actually the story of this 
amazingly strong person and still today people are trying to explain how how he got to be that strong mm. i mean one of his feats was to stop four horses going all different directions wow. and he could actually do that like this is it's actually amazing so we've We've done a poster, so this book will come in hardback and we have the jacket that unfolds as a giant poster with some pictures from the time and other information just because we thought he was so fascinating we just decided to have you know that, that content and you can see the picture of him stopping mm. the horses. Um, so we think it's really a great, uh, a, a really great story, very inspiring um, and he was also someone who helped you know the circus becoming an art mm. rather than just a freak show he built his own circus and he had uh, contortionists and also musicians coming and performing so he made it a real performing art rather than just a freak show so we really love that book and we hope you know so we owe like a lot to Luis here for exactly. today's circuses yes nice well, good. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and, and coming all this way <laughs> to show us these books. And we'll look forward to seeing them very soon, coming yes. this spring. Thank so. you so much for having me. Thanks. And thank you. And now thank I know uh, something else on my bucket list is to go to the, uh, the uh, French uh, Children's uh, Book uh, Festival. Yes. Next year. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Kidlet TV will be, uh, right. be there, maybe. Next uh, end of November. We'll have to make sure we put that on the um, calendar. And that was so interesting about the strongest man in the world. And that was all before steroids, you know? So it's just amazing, yes. <laughs> I know, you know, I know. A good diet and you, ne you never know how strong you can I, I uh, wonder what's get. in the water in Quebec. I yes, don't know, it's, exactly. it's a mystery to me. Yes, but you know, let's stay with France and those French publishers are so creative they and colorful. Are. They are colorful. They are colorful. And we talked a little bit about graphic novels and how amazing those are from France. So who knows about Toon Books? And that is run by Françoise Mouly. Françoise Mouly. And yes. she is a very stylish and glamorous yes, person. She yes. is. She is. And she's also an incredible genius. She actually won the Ingenuity Award from, from the Smithsonian Ingenuity for education oh. last year. So this is uh, the newest book from Kevin McCloskey, who did We Dig Worms and The Real Poop on Pigeons. I know it's always fun to say the word poop. Poop. Yes. Poop. It's just fun to say. Dig worms. So did we you dig worms? worms? I, I did occasionally dig worms because we went fishing where I grew up, but I, I bet you didn't do that, no, did you? No, I grew up in Brooklyn. No, we no. didn't have too many worms. The worms. No, no the worms were no. elsewhere. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, the new one is about fish. And did you know a lot of classes have goldfish as their pet? You probably already knew that. So this is great for classes, but anybody likes fish. But it's not just goldfish. It's all kinds of amazing fish. I learned lots of things about fish from reading this book. Okay. What did you learn? One well, thing. I'm putting on the spot. You are putting me on the spot. Um, it's they are colorful. Hard. They're colorful, but there were lots of fish I didn't even know existed. Right, yes. And uh, I didn't know about them you know, creating their own light deep in the trenches and, uh -huh. and how all that works. But all that is illuminated. Ha ha. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, in this book. So with Kevin McCloskey, so you know it's all going to be nonfiction. And how often do you have really gorgeous, well, actually, more often now than you used to, but really gorgeous nonfiction books for very young kids? So that is Something Fishy from Kevin McCloskey, who also kind of looks like Father Christmas. I just ah, have to mention that okay. because it's that time of year. It okay. It is. And uh, another book by Toon is. Word play by Ivan Brunetti, and it's all about compound words, and the illustrations kind of are whimsical about various uh, compound words like mm -hmm. egg plant. Oh, that's your favorite. That is my favorite, yes. And uh, another I like one, playground. Playground, yeah. right. And then there's uh, homesick. Homework. Homework. Which you know, isn't nearly as much fun. Right. You know what would yeah. be fun uh, is before you actually uh, show the book or read the book mm -hmm. to children is to uh, make a list of compound words like, uh, mm -hmm. and have them create the illustration oh. for eggplant or 
homesick, etc., and see how it compares yeah. with the illustrations uh, in the book. Or, or do their own. With yeah. their own. Yes. And yeah. one of the fun things is is that the the little girl whose name is Anne Marie, who mm -hmm. is of course a compound name, right? Is that she misunderstands some of the things that her father says. So when he says a grasshopper, she thinks about a bunny hopping on the grass, but really he's talking about an insect. So there's some humor in there too. And Ivan Brunetti does a lot of New Yorker covers. Oh, really? He does. So you may recognize his artwork from that. Well, uh, Francoise, Francoise Mouly yes. is also she's, with the New Yorker. She's the art director of art, the New Yorker. Right, yes, yeah. yes. So, yes. Well, so that is great. Tune, and they have more books even beyond these that will well, be out this spring. Well, now we're going to a, another uh, publisher, a kind of juicy one. It's uh, <laughs> Peachtree. Peachtree Publishers. Yes, but here in the United States. So Peachtree Publishing. Okay, so Peaches. So it's in Georgia somewhere. It is. It's Atlanta-based. Atlanta-based. Yeah. And they're celebrating a... Um, an anniversary. They are. It is 40 years of Peachtree Publishing, and they have done some amazing books in those 40 years, and they're keeping the tradition going strong right now with this year's books. Yes, I have uh, one to talk about, Flowers for Sarajevo by uh, John uh, McCutcheon, and he uh, did a, a book uh, in the trenches. Yeah, Christmas, Christmas in the Trenches. Christmas in the Trenches, which actually was uh, a holiday pick for Kidlit TV last year, which Great is choice. a... Uh, it's based uh, in a Christmas uh, during World War One. Right. Yes, and I'm sure many of you know the book, but you know, next year is next year, next month. It's a new year. It'll be the centennial, the beginning of the centennial mm -hmm. of World War One. And if you don't have a Christmas in the trenches, you really should get that to help beef up uh, your uh, World War One uh, collection. collection. Definitely. Right. Yes. But you know. Um, this is another, and that was a true story about yes, Christmas. Yes, uh, yes uh, during World War One. And this, unfortunately, is uh, another uh, true story that takes place during a war, the Bosnian War, mm -hmm. and it's flowers for Sarajevo, and uh, it's about a boy and his father who sell flowers in Sarajevo, mm -hmm. and his father then is uh, enlisted into uh, the army or into the battle, mm -hmm. and um, a. Um, an explosion or a bomb goes off in the area where he sells flowers and, and like 20 or something people yeah. pe uh, perish. And um, he goes back, but a, a musician also goes back, a cellist, right? Mm -hmm. oh. and, uh, and, he, and the cellist plays music uh, in the square and, uh, and the boy sells flowers. And the interesting thing about this book is that it not only tells the story, but you actually have the opportunity to hear the music. Of course, it comes with a CD, it does. Uh, a CD of the uh, music, the cello music. Right, it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Much like Christmas in the Trenches came with the song as mm -hmm. well, because John McCutcheon is well known as a, as a children's songwriter as well. Right, yeah. yes, so that's, uh, that's great. And, uh, and do you have another? Um, I do, but book? what I love about Flowers for Sarajevo is it's, it's a book about bringing beauty to the most desperate of mm -hmm. circumstances. So I think you could almost substitute the word Aleppo mm -hmm. or many, many cities that are under siege right now for Sarajevo with that book. But changing, changing subjects, woo, here we go to a wonderful, easy reader chapter book. And can you have too many of those? I don't think so. Because once kids learn how to read, they want to show off that they can read chapter books, darn it. So this is King and Kayla and the case of the missing dog treats. Mm. And this is by Dory Hilstead Butler, who did The Buddy Files. You may know those books with illustrations by Nancy Myers. And the fun thing about this is it's all from King, who is the dog. It's from his perspective. And he does not speak. He does not speak to, to Kayla in words, but you, he certainly communicates very vividly. And that is where the fun of the comes here. And when the, when the treats go missing, everyone accuses, accuses King, but he didn't do it. There's a mysterious intruder in the house and he tries to communicate to everyone that there's somebody else in the house and they took the treats. But it all is revealed in the end. And it's a, it's a wonderful, fun story with a really engaging canine character and his human, Kayla. Mm -hmm. So that is coming, this is a brand new series coming from Peachtree Publishers. So now 
We're, we're, uh, we're moving north of the border? We are, more, we are north. moving north of the border. We are going to another war-torn area. Oh. With Pajama Press. Oh, pajama, but that's Canadian. That right? is Canadian. This is, yes. this is based in Toronto. But this story takes place in Syria. So this is, um, and the art, I don't know if you can really tell, but the art is plasticine. It's just absolutely gorgeous. The book is by Suzanne Del Rizzo, and it's about a little boy who is forced to leave home because of the bombing. And he, um, he then is going with his father, but he has to leave his pet birds behind. He had pigeons that he kept in, in his home, that he kept in, in, a, in, a, in a pigeon coop. And they were really, really precious to him, but he had to leave them behind. And he's asking his father, are they, are they, are they safe? And his father has to constantly reassure him that they, he sure they escaped, they could fly. But at the same time, they're having to cross all this land and then make their way to the camps where they're going to be living. Um, this is an unbound book, so it's kind of sliding out there, but it gives you an idea of what it looks like when they go to the camps. And people try to rebuild their lives. So they, they plant things so they can eat and they, they create schools. At the same time, this, this boy is so sad. Whenever he tries to paint his favorite animal, it always turns out black. He just can't help but, but turn it all black. So this really shows what's going on in his head. But he is so hopeful that he'll someday regain it. And these are his dreams. And I think this is just a stunning spread. If you can see the gorgeous um, plasticine um, art showing the birds in the clouds. And he imagines the birds in the clouds. So he finally works through his anger when some birds find him. And he is able to have birds in the camp. And he has new pets and that helps him come back out of his shell. So when he actually um, meets a new girl who comes into the camp, he's able to show her a way to friendship and a way to build, rebuild her life. And it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous story, beautifully told, um, about somebody who makes a new life for themselves. So yes. that is it's set in a, a real life. It's it's, it's set uh, in Syria. A, a, a historic situation. Well, it's right? it's contemporary story. Yeah, yes. And um, yeah, so this is this is my beautiful birds. Yes, uh, along with uh, animals. Now, look how majestic these wolves uh, are on the cover of the Wolves Return: A New Beginning for Yellowstone National Park. Uh, this is uh, also by. Uh, Pajama Press, mm -hmm. and uh, it's by Celia Godkin. And it talks about the repopulation of Yellowstone with uh, wolves. And mm -hmm. it's a great conservation story, too. Yeah. Uh, it talks about the uh, re, uh, rerouting the river. Well, the, by introducing the wolves back to Yellowstone, it yeah. actually changed the course of the river. Men didn't do that. It was because the grazing patterns changed uh -huh. because there was a new predator reintroduced. So, I mean, it's, it's an amazing story, and it's, it shows the power of of one animal and, and the impact it can have on an ecosystem. Right, yes, and you know, and the illustrations are magnificent here, as you can just see. And it is a, a great science book. STEM. STEM, yes. Yay. And great back matter, which is something uh, Pajama Press yes. does really well. And uh, here we have, just in the uh, end papers, we have various uh, uh, animals with the, who they are, and then, and then, as you said, we have a great back matter. So it kind of sets the scene. Yes, it does. So, and that is uh, the wolves' return. So our last book from Pajama Press is Good Morning Grumple because there's so many good night books, but we kind of need good morning books too, don't we? we I mean, do. we have to wake up. That's right. Might as well have a little bit of help with that. And I don't know about you, but I am not always the ch most cheerful person when I wake up. So I, I can relate to this book. This is a padded board book, so it kind of mm -hmm. it makes me happy with rounded corners. So little ones will not get injured with this book. No, they will not. And this is by Victoria Allenby, who did the... Um, Timo's Garden, which was in New York Public Library's 100 books that they list they just mm -hmm. came out with. So just to give you a little, fi a little feel for it, oh, the illustrations are by Manon Gautier, another Quebecois, um, and she did Elliot and All the World a Poem, but a grumple. A grumple is hard to awaken. It doesn't like noises. It hates being shaken. It loathes and despises a bright, cheery voice, and big, shiny lights are a terrible choice. So that gives you an idea of what's coming to uh, 
going to be in the future for this grumple. But by the end, the grumple goes away and a lovely, happy child comes in this place. So that is... Actually, I lied when I said this is our last pajama book because you've got one I right there. I got one more, yes. You, do. you know, And I, uh, earlier, uh, yeah. was just ooing and ar 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 aring over the, uh, <laughs> die the die cut uh, book. This, yeah, uh, yeah, that's and, right. Right, and uh, that, I guess this Good is... Good book feel. Yes, well, I guess this is tied uh, for my uh, best uh, cover. You know, I mm. like that one, but I also like this one. Mm. Uh, when the rain came mm -hmm. and the use of lamination here in the cover, you know, gives the feeling of rain. Yeah, it's and, kind of shiny. And yes, and you had a book based in Syria, and this book is based in Sri Lanka. And mm -hmm. uh, it tells the story of when the rains uh, come, and we have a young girl here who is our heroine of the story. And, uh, and we have this creature here, which I found out is a bull, uh, bullock. Bullock. I guess it's a bull with an awk on the end. Yeah, yes, right, mm -hmm. yes. And she actually saves the uh, rice crop. She does. Yes. And so this is another uh, good uh, story to introduce another culture. And, and girls and small, small kids can actually have a big impact. Mm -hmm. So she does definitely save the day. Yes. I think we're moving on to another publisher. We're going we all the way from Sri Lanka to Scotland. Scotland. They have publishers in Scotland. I, yeah. I know this publisher. It's uh, Floris. Floris Books. Yes. And, and I yeah. actually, it's one of my favorites uh, today. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's uh, maybe from Scotland. But well, the publisher's from Scotland. Yes, but this, but this one is a Dorfin the nicest Viking uh, and the raging raiders. So this is, uh, you know, stories about the misunderstood uh, Vikings, you know? And uh, Thorfinn's uh, problem is he's polite and, and it gets him in trouble, but it also gets him out of trouble too. It does, he's yeah. got very good manners. Yes, and, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the back of the book says, warning, don't read this book if you don't like grunting or splatting. <laughs> P.S. It also contains flying elk, rotten fish, and itchy bottoms. What a way to sell a book, let me tell you. It has me opening it up to find out what's happening with Thorfinn in this uh, chapter book. Yeah, and it's by David McPhail, so you know there are going to be some great line drawings in the book, yes, too. Yes, yes. Uh, Illustrated chapter books. Yeah, oh, uh, here's the, it speaking of the uh, itchy bottoms, here is the drawing of uh, itchy bottoms. I just happened to open up to you that. You happened to open up to that page. The itchy I bet bottoms. you didn't think that you were going to see itchy bottoms this morning. No, or this, this whenever afternoon. we are, and there it goes, a very... Uh, oh, and here we have some, oh, and it has, what are these? these trading are cards. Trading cards. Yeah. We have uh, Viking trading cards. We have Freya and G uh, Gunga the Navigator and Hagar the, B Hagar the Brain Eater. Mmm. Mm. Ah, well, I know what I'm having for dinner. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. So, in addition to that, we have another book from Scandinavia. Ah, and this is actually right. one that's been out for a little while, but I, I don't think it's ever bad to go back and look at things that came out in the past, especially when they're as wonderful as this. Mm -hmm. This is The Yule Tomta and the Little Rabbits by Ulf Stark and Eva Erikson. Mm -hmm. And I think this was uh, Luann Toth's book she talked about a couple yeah. years ago. Yes. Yeah. And I'm sorry, is this, uh, what publisher is this? This is Floris. A oh, Floris too, yeah, okay. Yeah, yes. we're still on Floris. Yes, this was uh, one of the books in our uh, holiday picks two yes, years ago. Yes. yes. So we're just doing an anniversary retelling this one. But and it's a good time of year to go out and buy it because <laughs> uh, it's only December whatever today. Yeah, it's still early December. There is yeah. a story for every day leading up to Christmas in this right. book. Right, yes. But the little, tom the, the little Rabbits and the Tomta don't just do Christmas. They also have a midsummer book, and there's one coming out for the fall next, uh, next spring. So we already... You know, we're getting ready for it. So expect more from the Yule Tomta. And uh, I finally learned how to say Tomta. It's not Tomti, it's Tomta. But look at these illustrations. I think they are just exquisite. A um, little bit Elizabeth Werger-ish, mm -hmm. I think, in some ways. It's a, the palette is lovely, and I think that it's something that, you know, people will treasure. I have lots of friends who use this book and, and uh, use it with their kids. Even when the kids get older, they still want to spend time with this book, which shows you that it's truly a treasure. 
And, so and I up next. Do we have a new publisher? We do. We, we do, do have really. a new publisher, and this is. Uh, this starts with a T. T uh, Tilbury House. Tilbury House. Yeah, not, okay. not, not Tilsbury yeah, or Pillsbury. Yeah, it's Tilbury. Tils uh, Tilbury. Yep. And let me think. They're in where? Maine? They are in Maine. Yes. Yes, okay. very good. Yes. Uh, I've only been doing this all day today, so, <laughs> so I now know that uh, Tilbury is in Maine. Mm -hmm. And uh, this book is a book about a boat, a boat of dreams, and it's by the Brazilian uh, artist, uh, mm -hmm. Rojo uh, Coelho. Coelho, Coelho, Coelho. Feel free okay. to tell us how to pronounce that correctly in, yes. in the comments. Yes, and uh, this is a wordless. And just gorgeous, sepia. Yes. Kind of look to it. Mm -hmm. it uh, well, it starts off more brown, and then yes, the color that, that, kind of seeps it. in as the, yes. as Here the we progresses. Go. Yeah. yeah, but just exquisite illustrations. And another one that works really well for story starters. Mm -hmm. Writing prompts, but also just to revel yeah, so in. You can just see the colors. Yeah, just so right gorgeous. Here. Yeah. Back to the sea. It's it's kind of like the the journey or the quest, but it's just a much longer journey in this mm -hmm. book. So. Beautiful book. Yes. So that is the boat of dreams, and then I have another book from Tilbury House. I was just at the National Council for the Social Studies last yes. week, and this was a popular book with that crowd. This is Pass the Pendowdy, Please: Chewing on History of Famous Folks and Their Fabulous Foods, um, by Abigail Ewing Zeltz and illustrated by Eric Zeltz. I think they're related. So this takes different people throughout history, and then looks at some of the different kinds of foods they would have come in contact with. So we start off with Cleopatra because, you know, Cleopatra. And we find out that her cosmetics were made of um, beetles and ants. So if you want to do some do-it-yourself uh, natural. cosmetics, natural, all natural, natural all just, natural. you know, go outside, catch some beetles and ants. This may be the wrong time of year, but you can hold on to that thought for later. And she also was really into pickles. Pickles are a beautifier. So Who knew? I didn't know, but going to go out and buy some now. There so there you go. go. And it also has fun with, with um, the orientation of the pages. This is Marco Polo. So Marco Polo has been all sorts of places and brought back some strange things. And the problems with having false teeth is explored in here. Oh so my. the problem is, yes. Yeah, so we, we find out about lots of foods and also lots of fascinating facts. You have something to say. Oh, yes. In case you want to actually see George Washington's false teeth, they're here in New York City oh, at I'm the so Academy, glad to know that. the Academy of Medicine. So, if not on this trip, do you have to make an appointment? Uh, I'm not really sure, but uh, you can actually see his false teeth. If you don't, but you can come and maybe they'll uh, stock this in their gift Wouldn't store. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. If you don't want to have to go there, you can just look at the picture and pass a pendowdy, please. Mm -hmm. And that's that'll be very fun. So, lots of great information. Um, and Neil Armstrong, yes, another famous person who had to eat some interesting things mm -hmm. because, you know, in space, it's, it's hard. It is. It's hard, but yes. I think that anybody who is fascinated with fact will want this book. And speaking of facts, mm -hmm. uh, we have another book by uh, Tilbury uh, Press. Um, it's The History of Ambition in 50 Hoaxes what? by Gail Eden and uh, with an introduction by Philip House. And uh, there are 50 different stories, and they're very uh, short. And uh, I was just saying uh, earlier that, you know, with a class, uh, when you're waiting for dismissal, it's a great little thing you can read to the class. And there are some hoaxes that you know and some hoaxes that you don't. Like, uh, who knew that Arthur Conan Doyle believed in fairies and he actually caught them? On oh, a camera, that. yes, and then we have, there we have a, uh, and then one of my, my all-time favorite stories, and I, for the longest time, I did not think it was a hoax, was oh. did the Grand Duchess Anastasia survive the revolution? Oh. You know, that whole thing about she actually did survive. And, you know, that was a great movie. And it's going to be a musical, I understand. <laughs> yes. It's, just it's also a, a hoax, and the facts are in here. Yeah, so, so mm -hmm. yes. And uh, Houdini debunks a medium. So these are just, uh, and the first Ponzi scheme. Oh. Yes. So all these are, are fun uh, little uh, stories about things that we all 
uh, know about, but really don't know about. So yeah. it is uh, the history of ambition in 50 hoaxes. Lots of nuggets in there. Nuggets. And that is part of nuggets. a series. Yes, I know. I just want to get back to the nuggets from yes. France. Um, so there's also the history of travel in 50 vehicles and the history of civilization in 50 disasters. So there, there's more coming from the history in 50. Yes. And well, maybe on comments. Uh, Yes. Do you have a suggestion of something you'd like, like yeah, Tilbury House to focus yeah, on? Yeah, so we have uh, uh, hoaxes, uh, travel uh, and, vehicles. And disasters. And 50 disasters. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's okay. a lot of things. We, there are a lot of different directions we can go here. Yes. But the last one I wanted to show from Tilbury House has been out for a little over a year. This is Layla's Lunchbox. Oh, right. And this is a book that was an ALA notable and also um, has been a notable social studies t uh, title as as we saw last week at the social studies conference. But the thing that people were looking at, looking for most in, in our booth was for books that would help them meet, um, discuss Islamophobia. And this is a great book for that for, for young children because it demystifies um, Ramadan and, and Muslim, the Muslim faith to some degree. Layla's lunchbox is empty and the kids wonder why. And she explains that it's because it's the month of Ramadan. So it's not scary. It's, it's just this kind of tells you what's going on. It's a very helpful thing. And I can't tell you how many people said they wish they'd had this book for their children or they'd had this book in their classroom earlier for, for past years. But it's out now. And it's something that I think that really everybody is going to need because we need to we need to make sure that people understand that. We're all we're all the same. You mentioned in your booth, and I don't think we really explained. I didn't tell that. That no. uh, well, what do you do with so publisher spotlight? Yeah, yeah spotlight. We we show books at conferences all across the country. Um, ten we do ten a year, and we just came back from the social studies conference. We were at the English teachers conference before that, but we show off great books that are just perfectly within the wheelhouse for that conference. And this is one. And actually, the author Reem Faruqi was there. The illustrations are by Leah Lyon, but uh, Reem is is wonderful. She'll be at ALA Midwinter, too. So, oh, really? Yeah, so if you want to meet Reem. Will you be there? I'll be there. Oh, great. I bet Reem will be in my booth, too. But that's, that's Look for exciting. Publisher Spotlight. Yes, Publisher Spotlight <laughs> at uh, national at conferences. A yeah, yes. ALA Midwinter. Yes, yep. uh, yeah. Well, that's great. I, I think we have one last publisher. We do, we and do. a new one. This is a brand new publisher a to the new. U.S. Ah, yeah. Brand new, yo. It's been in the U.K. for a few years, but this is their, they're being introduced here in the United States um, in April, on April 23rd this April year. April 23rd, put that yes. on our calendar. That's right. And so this is What on Earth Books. And What on Earth Books does these incredible timelines. Do I pull it? I think I need to pull it. You pull it, I think I need to pull it. Can you? I don't think we can capture this. Oh Our studio my. is too small. Oh, there you go. This is six feet of history. Six feet of history. Six, six feet of history. And you would not believe everything that's in here. And the beautiful thing about this is it's not just... Here we go. I think we're almost there. There we are. Okay, I take it this way. You now. got it. You got it now. So it's not just um, looking at things by the time, but also thematically. So if if a kid is interested in inventions or in art, then they can follow that particular thing through time, and that's a way to find the thing that you're really interested in and, and just explore it. I commented that the print was small, and then Ellen said. There's a magnifying, magnifying glass, glass for people like me who yeah, need you, a little yeah, help. Right, exactly. Yeah. But that was fun. And uh, so there's this history one, and then... And then there's the nature timeline, which is going to focus more on and flora and fauna and nature. And um, and then the other one uh, that's coming out actually English, first... High school English teacher should have this. I swear I could auction this off at the English teacher conference. Mm -hmm. People wanted this book so much, they were saying, I need this book. This is the Shakespeare timeline wall book. And it does do it by time, but it also does it by theme and character. And do you want to do you want to hold it for sure, me? And, yeah, and yeah, I'll yeah, spread yeah, out yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, here. Sure. So and also just a really interesting way. So if you want to find out, you know, who is who is poisoned in Shakespeare, you can follow that. You can find out everybody was poisoned, which is really interesting. And the other feature of these wall books, which is really fun, are this journalistic sections in the back of each one where it kind of dives in deeper on certain topics. Letters to the editor throughout time. So it gives another perspective. Mm -hmm. Really, really fun. And and again, um, these are coming out starting this spring from, well, you should be able to get them anywhere. So nice. these are the wall books and more to come next year. I hear sports is 
coming just down the pike too. So wow. yay! We certainly covered a lot of books. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I can't wait for the spring. When we covered all, all of history. We did. Yeah, yeah I can't okay. wait till spring when they're all available. Mm -hmm. Just want to remind everyone that there is a list uh, at the uh, on our website that lists all the books, mm -hmm. and they're available from whatever a jobber that you may use, you know, they, mm -hmm. that uh, these books are available from them. But if you don't, you know, have the funds to buy all the books, you have the opportunity to get all the books by leaving a comment. And we're going to have the comment section up, you know, for a, a while. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the um, Live stream will be archived and it'll be archived on Kid Lit uh, TV and uh, on your website and too. Publisher Spotlight too, yeah. Yes, that, that is great. So if you enjoyed uh, hearing about these books, but you know people that were busy out Christmas shopping, holiday shopping, yeah. uh, you may want to say, hey, you missed a great, that Rocco and Ellen, they are such a team. <laughs> yes, and, and, and so hopefully you'll come back and share more books uh, at another time. Yes. So I hope you'll let me come back. Okay. Okay. Yay. So remember, until next time, give a kid a book in any format. Thank you for watching the Publisher Spotlight Showcase on Kidlet TV.